this is Sabila Mirage. Welcome back to my new channel. So many of you have requested my jewelry collection video and I thought about it and I responded to all of you, yes, that I was going to film it, but I wanted to film it today, but then I didn't feel very comfortable showcasing everything I have here on YouTube. I'm just gonna give it to you the way it is. I don't have a lot, well, a lot for me, and I just don't like it's not like it's showing off really and I understand why you would want to see it possibly you want to ask some questions or you want a review of an item that maybe you don't know I have I understand that but um, for now this is what we're gonna do if you see something that you want me to review on me I will gladly do it that's what I'm doing today because I got the request to review my Kalsedni, I think that's how you say it, Kalsedni 5 Motif um, Vintage Alhambra Bracelet. It's my newest edition, so of course, well not my newest edition, my newest edition is the Gemini Pendant with this chain. I said in a previous video, which I'm gonna link down below, and I'm also gonna link down below the video in which I clean this bracelet and my Onyx bracelet, so you can go check those out. I mentioned that this trace chain, which is 70 centimeters, when I wrap around my neck twice, is not a choker but is kind of a choker that it's not very tight but it's very tight I didn't close it you know because I have long nails so it's very hard for me I needed somebody to help me with this so when I put it on I realized that it's actually a choker choker like it can probably choke me like if I sleep on it wrong so I was thinking to extend this chain by two inches which I think is complementary within the first three months um, so I might do that, but at the same time, if I want to wear it with my pendant, my Gemini pendant, then it will be too long. So I'm confused. Maybe I should just order another chain and just extend it and wear it as a choker like this. Like I want to wear it every day. I'm kind of over it, like wearing vintage Alhambra pendant with vintage Alhambra earrings. I get 10 motif and earrings. I have two sets of those. Um, I get it for like a special occasion. I just wear these earrings every single day. So I wanted this like choker because I feel like it looks really good and it's not um, overpowering, but at the same time the chain is thick. So I wouldn't be afraid to break it, if that makes any sense. And I can layer anything with it really. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. This video was requested by one of my subscribers and I'm super excited to film it because I love this bracelet. I love Kelsedni Stone. So let's just talk about the bracelet. Let's go. I decided to put it in its original case. This is what it comes in. It is resized, so whenever I tilt it, see what happens because it's not long enough to be tucked in. These are the extra lengths that I got when I resized my bracelet. I resized all of my fine motif bracelets and I am gonna cover the reason for that in this video. This is what it looks like with four links removed. It has the exact same space in between each of the motifs. And I love this bracelet. It makes me so, so, so happy. I cannot wait to tell you the story behind it. In this video, I will be covering the color, hardness, wear and tear, and of course, the meaning of this beautiful crystal, as well as resizing, and why I chose this bracelet, even though it's in white gold and I prefer yellow and rose gold. So yes, let's get into it. So I had a bracelet on hold for me and that one was in Tiger's Eye, five motif vintage Alhambra bracelet. But when I got to the store, I realized that the Tiger's Eye didn't look the way I wanted it to look. It did not have any black lines to it. It was all pretty much yellow, mustardy, and a little bit of like brown lines, but it was nothing like I wanted it to be because I like Tiger's Eye to be very multi-dimensional and I like to see some black, well not black, but very dark brown lines in it. When I was putting Tiger's Eye bracelet on hold for me, I asked if they had Calcedony bracelet and she said they did not. When I got there the next day, they told me that they got Calcedony bracelet in that day so I wanted to see it and when I saw this bracelet I fell in love and here's why first of all it's hard to find Kalsedni that will be actually blue usually it's milky white grayish with a little bit of lilac a little bit of blue but it's not a vibrant blue color I got extremely lucky that all of and they have to 
get all of the stones to match. They have to find all of the stones to be kind of similar, have similar blue hue to it or lilac. They all have to look cohesive. So when I saw this specific Fine Motif Calcedony bracelet, I really noticed the blue. Usually Calcedony looks like nothing, like truly like gray, translucent. This stone is translucent, so you will see your clothes through it. It looks very much like bacon. It has the lines, the translucent lines, and then the opaque lines, and it looks kind of like bacon, and I love bacon, so I had to get it. I don't know if you'll be able to tell how blue it is. And all of the stones kind of look similar. They have to look very similar. And the white gold also is very white. Why I'm mentioning this? It's because usually, I'm gonna show it to you on the black background, so you can see that it's translucent. If you can tell, like it's very much translucent. You can see darker lines now on the black background. So it will, your clothes will affect the way it looks. The reason I'm mentioning the whiteness of the white gold, it's because usually if Cartier or Van Cleef and Arpel make a white gold jewelry piece, and it doesn't have any diamonds in it, it is not rhodium plated. It's only rhodium plated when it has diamonds in it. What does it do? Without rhodium plating, the gold, white gold, is very gun metally. It is very dark. Well, not very dark, but it's dark gray. And I do not mind that at all because I have a love ring, love wedding band in white gold in white gold without any rhodium plating and I love that piece. I bought it for this finger. It's just a thin band and I absolutely love it. So I do not mind at all the gun metally color, but, and this is exactly what my essay pointed out to me. She said that it's 100% rhodium plated. This piece was 100% rhodium plated. And she said that it's never usually this white. So maybe they get them from time to time this wide. And when I tried it on, I made my decision because I bought it to wear it with my Cartier Love bracelet. Well, I don't wanna say Love Cuff because it's called Love Bracelet on the website, but it's in the cuff style. And I'm gonna show it to you. This is the bracelet that I wear every single day. Um, it is my Cartier Love Cuff with one diamond and I love this piece so much. I just, I never leave my home without it. It's the easiest thing to put on and take off. So I really like it. And the reason why I don't wear my Calcedony bracelet, even though I love it so much as often as I would like, it's because it's harder to put on, especially it was resized, so it fits me perfectly. It's not long and dangling, so it makes it harder because it's very, well, it's not very fit. It has to have some fluidity to it because it's not gonna look good but it is a perfect size for me, which makes it a little bit harder, especially with long nails, it is impossible to put on. So let me have somebody help me and I will be right back. So this is what it looks like with my love bracelet. I love how yellow gold complements the blue and I think they look so, so good together. So when I tried them on, I decided to go for this one because it looks very different. It's not like your typical mother of pearl fine motif bracelet, like everybody and their mother has it. And it's okay, you know, like I have the most basic earrings from Van Cleef and Arpel and I'm totally in love with them. But this bracelet is very rare. Like for example, I have never met anybody with a bracelet like this and I just, I don't know, I feel like it's a little different, especially because it's so translucent. I just really like it. It's just, it makes me very happy. So this is how I intended on wearing it. Now let's talk about the hardness of this stone. The hardness of Calcedony is 6.5 to 7, Onyx is 7 and Carnelian is 7, but Carnelian is Calcedony. Did you know that? I bet you didn't. Well, maybe you did, I don't know. But I was really shocked when I looked it up. So, Carnelian is a type of Chalcedony and it's hard to find it in a very nice vibrant blue. So I'm happy that I got it in this beautiful baby blue and I think that it's pretty bright for, well, pretty much compared to everything that I saw in Chalcedony. Like, um, 
magic necklaces or a tan motif that I saw also was very milky white um Kelsedny. it wasn't this vibrant blue but when I put it on I really loved it so yes it's one it's my second piece from Van Cleef and Erpel in white gold the reason I asked for this bracelet to begin with it's because I am obsessed with the meaning of this crystal it removes all of the negative thoughts from your head and it also takes away your nightmares it just makes you think and feel more positive which I absolutely love the idea of it taking away my nightmares because I'm a deep sleeper and when I have a nightmare it's hard for me to wake up like I will start screaming and then the sound of me screaming wakes me up so it's like the other way around like what the hell I should get scared wake up but no I scream and then if somebody doesn't wake me up I wake up by myself when I read the meaning of this crystal I right away paid attention to because I don't have negative thoughts I'm a very optimistic positive type of person I don't have um, any jealousy I don't look at people and wish something bad happening to them well sometimes but only when somebody pisses me off and a lot of people piss me off actually so Hmm. Okay, scratch that. I can't put that in a video. Um, anyway, back to taking away nightmares. <laughs> so that was um, so that was very attractive to me. I make sure to put this bracelet on before I go to bed. Yes, I believe in it because I feel like that's the beauty of crystals and if you don't believe in them Why spend so many thousands of dollars in them? That makes no sense I feel like believing in them makes it that much more exciting to buy them. That's just my opinion I love the meaning of the stone Let's talk about wear and tear and then on to resizing There is no wear and tear on this bracelet. I have washed it So I washed this bracelet a couple of times because first I washed it when I brought it back from the store because I wanted to wash off everybody's energy. Crystals absorb energy. So don't let anybody touch your crystals, be it Onyx, Mother of Pearl, Chalcedony, Carnelian, any of those, do not let anybody touch them because people may carry negative energy and crystals are like sponges. They will absorb that energy and that energy can affect you. And yes, stones are porous and they can absorb and they can shrink or they can change color, blah, blah, blah. Yes, if you do it over and over and over and over again for like years on end, I'm not suggesting you do it with Mother of Pearl, no. But with harder stones like Chalcedony, Carnelian, Onyx, you should, not Malachite, I don't think Blue Agate um, is okay to wash, um, Tiger's Eye is okay to wash, it's very hard and it's very very hard wearing. So I wash off the dirt when I get it home from the store, even though maybe they clean it there, maybe they steam it, I don't know what they do in the back, but I still wash it at home with an extremely mild solution of baby soap and water and I have that video linked for you down below, so if you want go check it out. Then I lay it out in the sun, it depends, Mother of Pearl doesn't like sun, doesn't like heat, doesn't like... Um, doesn't like water, doesn't like anything really. So Mother of Pearl is not good to be recharged under the sunlight, maybe moonlight is better, but you can put your crystals under sunlight or moonlight and have them lay there for a couple of hours to recharge. What happens is they're cleansing themselves and recharging with good energy. And then you use that energy from your crystal. Each crystal has a job for you and that's the energy they're spending on you. So for instance, Onyx is my protection bracelet. I always charge it under the sun. I don't wash it often because nobody touches it. And maybe it has something to do with me just believing in it. But I also truly think that it brings me luck and it protects me from other people's negativity, jealousy. So I love, love, love Onyx and I always charge it under the sunlight. And I do the same with Chalcedony, but not for a long time because I also don't want to risk it. Also, how you know your Chalcedony stone is real is that it does not reflect light like it does not reflect light like a glass surface. It should not reflect light like onyx or carnelian. They have a different molecular structure, I believe, so that's why when you polish them, they just are very sharp and reflective. And Chalcedony should have a little bit of a waxy 
type of sheen. It's very reflective, don't get me wrong, um, and it is very shiny, but it looks kind of like either a very smooth candy or something made out of silicone. Don't freak out, it's not damaged, it's not, it's, it's perfect, it's how it's supposed to be. Yes. Now let's talk about resizing. I have so many thoughts. So many thoughts. I hope you don't hate me after I share them with you. Some people choose not to resize their five motif bracelets. They come pretty large. You can remove two, four, six, or eight links, and I'm sure you can even extend it. The links will be given to you, given back to you, so you can use them in the future if you want to resize it back, for example. But some people choose not to resize their bracelets. And one of the most popular reasons for that is because they want to wear it as a necklace. If you can buy two fine motif bracelets to use it as a necklace, just get a damn necklace. Because when you connect black and white or black and gold or red and blue fine motif bracelets, it doesn't look good. It looks like you're trying too hard and it just doesn't look good. If you have two mother of pearl, two onyx, two guilloche, two bracelets in the same color, I can understand that. But who needs two of the same five motif bracelets? It makes no sense. Again, we're back to no sense. And then what ends up happening is the bracelet sits right here. Like on me, without it being resized, it sits here. Let me remove my love bracelet. So this is where it sits now. It's very mobile, but it's a perfect size. You don't want your bracelet to sit here because it looks cheap. It looks like you borrowed it from somebody and it's not your own. And you need to give it back. I'm sorry it is what it is. Or, and this pisses me off more than anything else, like I'm sorry but uh, <laughs> some people decide to have one motif dangling and close it, close the lobster clasp before this motif. What ends up happening is one motif is dangling, but not only one motif, also, also this little circle is dangling. And I'm sorry, I'm gonna go ahead and say the next. It is just plain disrespectful to this creation. It is disrespectful to your vintage Alhambra five motif bracelet by Van Cleef and Arpel. If you're spending that much money on a bracelet, have it fit you perfectly. It needs to look like it was made for you and you only. Do not cheapify your bracelet by having one motif dangling. And do not not resize it because then it looks like, again, you borrowed it. It looks borrowed in both cases. And I can guarantee you that you will not be wearing it as a necklace as much as you thought you would. So it's neither here nor there. It's not a good idea. It needs to be resized perfectly. If you don't resize it right away, chances are you won't because you will just find excuses or you won't want to send it out and wait for it for three weeks or two weeks or I don't know how long it takes now. You need to do it. So a link is two circles, two connected circles. Explaining to dumbasses like myself, because when I got my Onyx bracelet, I asked for eight links to be removed because I thought that a link is one circle. And my essay told me that it would be way too tight, to which I got offended. So he explained to me, and I'm explaining to you, a link is this. Four of these was removed from this bracelet, and I wear Cartier Love Cuff in size 17, and I wear Justin Clue in size 16. So 17, 16, this one's probably 17. 
So when I tried on different sizes, we decided to remove four lengths. So it's still very fluid and very feminine looking. It has to move. I love it so much. I can't tell you. I love it so much. The meaning behind it, the way it looks, it's just everything. And the fact that it's the perfect size. And again, the most important for me is the meaning. Obviously the way it looks, because my favorite color is purple, blue, and lilac. And I almost forgot to mention that there are some people here on YouTube that suggest that you remove one of the clovers to resize it. Grab your face. Like, seriously? What? Oh, grab my face. Okay. Ah! Like, seriously? Also, I do not panic when I wash my hands in a public restroom and water or soap gets on it. I just make sure to rinse it off and wipe it dry and I never, ever care. If it's not supposed to be wet ever, they wouldn't be making these bracelets. That's just my opinion. Obviously, don't spray perfume on it. Do not put hairspray on it none of the chemicals. Thank you for requesting this video and thank you guys for watching. If you found this video interesting, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel and I will see you soon. Bye guys!